The Dallas Cowboys seem to be back on track, but now they welcome the New York Giants. Welcome into Hot Reads, your weekly look at the NFL with Hall of Fame quarterback Troy Aikman. My name is Tom Vandervoort, and Troy, I know you get to stay home in Dallas this week to watch the Cowboys as they host the Giants. And I feel like watching the Cowboys against the Panthers, you know, they had a pretty conservative game plan, no turnovers or sacks uh, for Tony Romo. What's he going to be asked to do against the Giants as they try to make it two in a row here? Well, I think the thing that we've seen, Tom, uh, the last couple of games from the Cowboys after coming off their bye week and the, and the loss you know, on Monday night against the Chicago Bears is there's, there's been a, a commitment to running the football. They ran the ball exceptionally well, were very physical. You know, In that loss against Baltimore, they came back last week, they ran the ball well. I think that's going to be a real key to continue to do that against the New York Giants defense that has given up yardage on the ground. Uh, they obviously have excellent pass rushers. Uh, we saw it again last week against Washington, certainly two weeks ago in that win over San Francisco with six sacks in that game. And so I think that's going to be important uh, for them to continue to play the style of offense that we've seen from them. I, you know, some may view that as conservative, uh, but I think conservative, if in fact that's what you're going to call it, is going to be important this weekend. Absolutely. And you know, on the other side of the ball, you've got Victor Cruz going deep. And it's a classic fan question from the game last week. And I know you called that one. How does a guy get deep in that situation when he's the deep threat and you're trying to protect a late lead? Is that a mistake by the defense? Or is there something that the Giants were able to do in the design of that play that got Victor Cruz deep? And how will the Cowboys have to contend with him this week? Well, it was an adjustment uh, by the Giants, you know, by Victor Cruz and then Eli Manning seeing it. And fortunately for them, Victor Cruz uh, sensing what the quarterback was seeing and continuing to stay up the, the seam on his route. Uh, the Redskins had two guys on him. I and mean, they were anticipating an outside breaking route. The safety, who was giving help, sat just enough on that route to where Victor Cruz was able to go deep, uh, you know, somewhat unexplainable in that situation, as you just said, but I don't think that they felt that they were going to take a shot, you know, for the whole thing that early, you know, into that drive. But, I, you know, whenever you play against the Giants, you better have an answer for Victor Cruz on third down. And, and, and not many teams have, and it's hard to do because he does so many things so well. I mean, a lot of those slot receivers are like him in that they're very quick and they can create separation and they advance the chains. Uh, but he has big playability as well because of his speed. Uh, he's an outstanding player. I said it in the broadcast last week. Uh, I think he's the best slot receiver in football. I mean, there was a time where I think you would say that Wes Welker was that guy. But from what I've seen, I think Victor Cruz is uh, certainly at the top of his game. Absolutely. Another guy you saw last week, Robert Griffin III. And I know we talked leading up to that game about how interested you were in meeting him and watching him play in person. What was your takeaway after watching the Redskins uh, fall short against the Giants? Well, he's, uh, he's a terrific talent, as we know. And it was my first opportunity to watch him up close. Uh, had a chance to visit with him prior to the game. And, you know, very impressive young man. I, I think, you know, he, like so many of these young quarterbacks who have came into the game in recent years, uh, the game's not too big for him. You know, I mean, I know what it feels like to come in as a rookie and, and try to win. And, you know, typically a first round pick doesn't have a lot of great players around him. And yet he's really elevated the players on the field uh, along with him and a very confident young man. I think the thing that has impressed me in addition to that is, you know, a lot of times someone who can run like he can, then what comes into question is their ability to throw the ball. We certainly heard about that last year with Cam Newton. Uh, that was dispelled very early in his rookie year because of the success that he had. And we also heard it from Mike Vick. And it wasn't until he got to Philadelphia that he was able to overcome that criticism. But no one's ever questioned Robert Griffin's ability to throw the football. And he really is a passer first. And then he has this other component to where he's a, a world-class sprinter. Uh, he's going to be around for a long time. And because of that, the Redskins are going to be relevant for a while. All right, Troy, that's been great this week. I appreciate all your time. And we'll uh, catch up with you next week. You got it. Thanks, pal.